Good morning. Let's give God some praise today in the church. It's good to see you this morning. The word of the Lord in Matthew chapter 13. If you could turn to your Bibles there. Matthew chapter 13 and verse 44. It says, and again, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and hid. And for the joy over it, he goes and sells all that he has and buys the field. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your, your goodness towards us. We thank you for this great day. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Lord, it's glad to be, I'm glad to be in your house. I'm glad to lift up your name. I'm glad to rejoice in you. I'm glad to magnify you. I'm glad to be with other believers, Lord God, that know you and, and want to see you do great things in, in this land and in this place, Lord. So we thank you today. Have your way. Move in this place, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, I want to bring you greetings from Impact Church. It's been a while since I've been uh, able to minister to you here, so it's good to be back home. But I bring greetings to you. Believe it or not, we're about ready to celebrate our one-year anniversary of Impact Church. In, in September, our theme this year is uh, celebrating. Um, we're prepared to advance. We went through a year of, of getting ready, and we believe God's ready now to advance us into his purposes. But um, again, it's an honor to be here with you today. Pastor Mike. I want to bring greetings to you, sir, and honor you. Thank you for all that you do and your covering in our lives. And we just let's honor the man of God. <laughs> Didn't he do a phenomenal job leading worship today? <laughs> so let me just let me tell you something. If if I was charged with leading worship, hey, I didn't tell the joke yet. It, <laughs> If I was charged with leading worship, the, the, there would be a mass exodus from the room. But last, last Sunday, we were worshiping in church, and I was just, the Bible says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. So I'm glad that he's listening to me, right? So I'm, I'm making a joyful noise unto the Lord. And a couple days later, my, young, my, my daughters all sing, and they rotate on the worship team with my wife. And my youngest daughter said, Dad, you were, you were harmonizing with us on Sunday. And I said, I was what? You were harmonizing with us. I, 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 I know, and that's what, that's what I was doing. Yep, I was harmonizing with you. And my wife quickly spoke up. She said, no, that was Lincoln. He was sitting in the front row next to Dad. And I was like, no, no, that was, that was me. That was, that was harmonizing. But anyway, so truth be told. So to, the title of the message today is, is Treasure Hunters. Treasure Hunters. Everybody wants to find a treasure, Everybody wants to strike it rich, you know, to find that, that, that chest full of gold, that, that ancient artifact, something that's extremely valuable. Um, you know, during the, the 19th century in, in Bristol, England, it was the busiest seaport in the world. While local sailors were at sea, tradesmen would extend credit to their wives until the very day their husband's ship returned to the port. And when asking for credit, they would promise to pay the tab when the ship comes in. So, so when the ship comes in, I'm going to pay back the money that I borrowed. And um, there, there was a real ship that was coming because their husbands were out trading and making funds and bringing them back home. Um, but a lot of people have, have forgot the fact that when you say my ship's coming in, that there actually is a ship coming in. You know, a lot of people are waiting for their ship to come in. Theoretically, they're waiting for their treasure to come in, but there's no ship coming. And they're staring at the, on the dock, staring out at the water, waiting for their ship to come in. And, and I would encourage people that, that know there's no ship coming, they might as well get out in the water and start swimming. You, know, they need to, you need to go out there and, and go for it. But, but some people are just staring at the sea, waiting for a ship to come in that isn't coming hoping for a treasure to come their way. Uh, instead, they, like I said, we should just go out and, and start swimming. You know, so, so buried and, and hidden treasure may be stuff of legends and film, but, but treasure hunters really exist. And sometimes they actually find something. People going out in search of treasures. You know, cities full of, of treasures and resources 
are a real thing. Places where gold was stored and resources were stored. This isn't something new. This was throughout scripture. In Exodus chapter 1 verse 11 it says, this is when the children of Israel were in bondage in Egypt. It says, therefore set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens. And they built for Pharaoh treasure cities, Pithom and Ramses. Right, so the children of Israel were, were slaves and they were building these treasure cities. They were building these places that the Egyptians could store their resources. The word treasure there literally means storehouses. So they, they would put all the, the gold and the silver and the, the valuable resources that they had and they would put them in the treasure cities and keep them there. And, and people throughout time have been hoping to, to strike it rich. And, and find these ancient treasure cities and find these places where gold was stored and, and dig through the earth. You know how many you know that, that when you're looking for treasure, it's not usually on the surface. It's usually you got to go down deep to find the treasure, something that's hidden. How, how many of you like money? Okay, the rest of the liars can put their hand up. Or, or I'm I'm collecting. If you don't like it, I'll be happy to take that burden off of your hands and just pass it over my way. So, so I like money. Do you like money? Yeah. So, so as a kid, I'm telling on myself, I would literally wash my dollars on the ironing board. And, and then they always have to be turned heads up. And all my money has to be in denominational order. Right, so you put the ones in the front, the, the fives, the tens, the twenties, the fifties, the Benjamins. You put them all in order, right? You, you stack them there. Do you like money? Yeah, so, so the Bible doesn't say money is the root of all evil. It says the love of money, which is the unhealthy desire for. Money is a tool and it's a resource that God's given us. And, and to advance the kingdom of God, we need hard work and we need money. Th those wells in, in, uh, in Ethiopia and Colombia don't drill themselves. It takes money. It takes work to make those things happen. But, but I, I like money. And I, as a kid, I was always hoping to strike it rich, to find that, that hidden treasure. So I, as a young person, I started collecting baseball cards. And, and the reason I started collecting baseball cards wasn't because of this extreme love for baseball. It's because I wanted to strike it rich. Because right, I heard all these stories about people who had these baseball cards as a kid, and then they would, they would put them up in the attic, and then they would sell them at a yard sale, and then later on they'd find out, I just sold something that was worth $50,000, and I sold the whole box for two bucks. Right? So, so as a kid, I started collecting baseball cards, and I still have them today, and they're all in, sorted by team and by person and albums, and I'm very, just like the dollars, they all have to be in order. So I collected these baseball cards, and as a, as a young person, my parents gave me this kit, which was like a card collector kit. And in there, there would be the, you know, the sleeves where you put the cards inside of it in a binder, and there was a price guide in there. And then as I was going through the cards, I, I was reading about them, and I found this one card that was in this kit that they gave me, and it was by the, the name of Honus Wagner. So Honus Wagner was a, a player in the early 1900s, and and. I'm reading about his, his card and the value that it's worth, and I realize I have it. it it's, it's there in the kit that I was given, it, that I got for $19.99 for, for Christmas, and the Honus Wagner card was in my kit. So as a nine-year-old, I'm, I'm reading this, and I'm looking at the card that I have. It looks just like the picture in the magazine, and my heart starts beating. I just became, um, the other day, Honus Wagner baseball card was in the news. It just sold for $5.2 million. So I, I struck it rich as a nine-year-old. I got Honus Wagner in, in this baseball card kit that I was given for Christmas. Come to find out it was just a copy of the Honus Wagner card. But, but all of us are hoping to, to strike it rich. And we're hoping to, to find that, that treasure of something of significant value. They're, they're in the... Uh, in, California, there was something called the California Gold Rush. And uh, this happened in the mid-1800s, and, and somebody discovered, discovered nuggets of gold in Sacramento in 1848. And, and the discovery of this gold drastically shaped the events of American history because somebody found out there was gold, and, and news of this spread of the discovery, it spread all over the place. 
Thousands of prospective gold miners traveled by sea and over land to San Francisco and the surrounding area. Why? So they could strike it rich, so they could find their, their hidden treasure. So throughout 1849, people from around the United States borrowed money, mortgaged their property, spent their life savings to make the long journey to California in pursuit of the kind of wealth that they'd never dreamed of. They left their families, their hometowns, all in search of some gold nuggets that could change their life. They were, they were treasure hunters. They were in search. Of, if they could find this treasure, it would change the course of their lives. You know, a total of $2 billion worth of precious metals was extracted from the land in California during the gold rush. And it drastically changed the history of this nation because it caused people from the east to go out to the west. They went out to the west and said, oh, this is nice out here. And it, 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 it was an instrumental part in the development of this nation. But, but they were in search of treasure. And I think we all would like to find treasure. We'd all like to find something of value. That's what a treasure is. It's a quantity of precious metals, gems, or other valuable objects, a treasure. Treasure is valuable. And, and people are attracted to treasure. If I had a treasure chest up here and I opened it up, you'd want to come and take a look at what's inside with, with hopes that I'd give you some of it. Pe people are attracted to treasure. And, and people are consumed with finding this treasure, getting, getting money and clothes and shoes and fancy cars and big houses and approval of people. People are constantly in, in an effort, in a pursuit to find this treasure. And, and they always tell you to, to follow the money because people will do anything to, to find the treasure and get their hands on these valuable things. Matthew chapter 6 verse 19 says, don't lay up for yourselves treasure on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. So there's nothing wrong in, in the pursuit of treasure, but I want to tell you that many times we've got our wrong value system on what's valuable, what's really, really important. And, and in my life was, was shaped by, uh, several years ago, I was watching a, a Billy Graham movie. And, and in our life, we could think about, how can, I, how can I gather these things? How can I get a big house? How can I build a, build a treasure chest and fill it up? And I was watching the movie about this man's life, and I said, man, he, he spent his life for the cause of the gospel, and don't store up for yourself treasures on earth where they can rust and be stolen, but store up treasures in heaven. And everything that you do for God, everything that you give, everything that you sacrifice, all the time that you serve, it's storing up for yourself treasure in heaven where the enemy has no access to it. Your treasure is what gets your heart's attention. Matthew 6, 21 says, where your treasure is, there's your heart also. So if I want to find out where your treasure is, I just need to know where your heart is. Where's your heart? When it comes time to worship, when it comes time to give, when it comes time to serve, is that where your heart is? Or is your heart on, I got to fill that bank account up, and I got to cause, I got to make something happen, and I got to build the treasure chest, and I got to, I got to, I got to. Where your treasure is, there's your heart also. So think about these, these Israelites. They're slaves in Egypt. And I was preaching a couple weeks ago about, about the book of Exodus, and I think there's no more fitly named book in the Bible than the book of Exodus. Because when you look at Exodus, you read the name, you know what this is about. This is about getting out of here. And, and we'd like Exodus chapter one, verse one to say, and, and the Lord made a way, and the children of Israel exited out of their affliction. But the story begins with their affliction intensifying. And it begins with, with Pharaoh trying to kill them off. And it begins with them having to build these treasure cities for, for the Egyptians. And many times through our trials and through our struggles is, is why and how we get desperate enough and get enough faith to rise up in us for God to move. So they, the Israelites were building this treasure cities for, for, the, for the Pharaoh and they were being built up. But God had a plan in this all along. And 
many times through Scripture, you'll find out that what, what looked one way was actually something else that was happening. What appeared to be one way, things going on in your life, was actually God working behind the scenes. I read this morning in Isaiah, when God acts, who can reverse it? When God does something, who can reverse it? But Exodus chapter 19, verse 5 says, Now therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be my special treasure to me above all people, for all the earth is mine. So the Israelites were building treasure cities for the Egyptians to store their resources, and God flipped the script and said, you know what, Israelites, you know what, believer, you know what, saint, you're my treasure. And you know the word treasure means storehouse. So God says about you and me, those who believe him and those who obey him, that we are his storehouse. We are his treasure. So God takes of himself. He takes what's valuable of himself and he puts it inside of us. And that, that he's, you're my, you're my storehouse. You, you, were, you were building a treasure city for the Egyptians and for them to store their wealth. But I want you to know that you are my storehouse. And all the earth is mine. God says the earth is his and everything in it. He's not talking about the valuable substance of, of silver and gold. He's saying of my very self, of my very presence, which more valuable than silver and gold, I'm going to take that and I'm going to deposit Deposit that inside of you, my treasure. You are my treasure. You are God's treasure. If we take what he says and we obey him, he deposits himself inside of us. We become God's treasure cities. We become the place where God stores his valuable self. And you know there's treasure hunters, so there's people that can come and, and do archaeological digs inside of you and say, wow, there's, there's treasures in there. You know, treasures aren't found on the surface of things. They're found down deep. So sometimes you can have a conversation with somebody, and you could just be, hey, how you doing? That's good. That's fine. There's a little value to that. But when you can really sit down with somebody and dig deep, you can pull out some treasures and say, oh, my goodness, I didn't realize there was so much value in there. I didn't realize of all that God's deposited inside of you. I didn't realize through all those trials and circumstances and issues that you went through uh, that God was building a treasure. He was depositing stuff inside of you. And the things and the trials and the issues that you go through, oh, they're not just for you. There's for other people to come and say, oh, look at all this treasure that's in there. You're God's treasure city. It says if we obey him, we become his treasure city, a place that he can deposit himself in. So as many of you know, I've got three beautiful teenage daughters. And, and there was something wonderful about quarantine. The beautiful thing about quarantine is they were quarantined. <laughs> right? So, so when quarantine was over... These three beautiful teenage daughters began to interact again with people, mainly boys. And so something was great about quarantine, right? Because you could, you could keep those treasures in the treasure chest. So as they began this interaction with these other creatures, <laughs> I sat down with them and I said, girls... Do you understand that you're a treasure and you carry a treasure? You're a treasure because you've been made in the image of God. You're a treasure because of, of all that God's done for you and all that he's created you to be. But you also carry a treasure because of those moments of time that you spend with him, those moments of time that you spend seeking him, God takes of himself and he deposits himself inside of you. So you're, you're a treasure and you carry a treasure. And not just anybody gets access to that treasure chest. Do you understand me? Because you're a treasure and you carry a treasure with you. They carry, we carry the power and the presence of God inside of us. 
Luke chapter 17, verse 20 says, Now when he asked, was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he answered and said, The kingdom of God does not come with observation. Nor will they say, see here or see there. For indeed, the kingdom of God is within you. So God takes of himself, and, and we imagine like Steven Spielberg and Hollywood, that we would, we would picture this great revealing of the kingdom of God, and the sky would be split open, and Jesus comes and saves the day. But he says, no, it's not coming in the way that you think, because I'm actually taking of myself and taking of my kingdom, and I'm depositing it inside of you. What if people didn't understand, and if people didn't know, they would think it's not here. They would think it's nowhere to be found, but he says it's a treasure that he hid in a field. He hid inside of you the treasure of the kingdom of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7 says, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels, not the excellence of the, that the excellence of the power of God may be revealed and not of us. So God took the most valuable treasure thing that he could possibly take himself and he put it inside of these clay pots. Think of it. It's like taking gold bars, ancient gold corns, maybe a Honus Wagner baseball card, and sticking it like in the change dispenser in your car. Take them, he took the most valuable of himself and he put it in this earthen vessel. So you have to realize that you're a, you're a treasure and you carry a treasure. If you've submitted your life to Jesus, he's deposited himself inside of you. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field which a man found and hid. And for joy over it, he goes and sells all that he has to buy the field. The gold rush people went all the way across the country. They sold everything they had in search of a treasure. And we've got a treasure of God inside of us. And we have to sell out to, to, to mine that treasure and to cause it to come out. We're watching the Olympics just conclude uh, earlier today. And, and as it, you're, I'm watching these athletes, you know, they... they all the work and all the effort and all that they've done is something that's inside of them. And in the moment of their competition, they're not looking from without. They're not looking all around. They're looking from within. They're looking at the deposit that was made on the inside of them that they threw discipline, they threw hard work, they threw dedication. And in the moment of their, of their competition, can they, can they pull out the treasure that's inside of them? He's put this treasure in earthen vessels. We're all on a search for treasure, and we have to buy the whole field. How many of you know when you, when you start digging for treasure in the earth, you may come across some rocks. You may come across some challenging issues that are hard to break through. You may come across some circumstances that are difficult. Have you ever been in a rock in a hard place? You know, you're there and there's, you, got, you got to get through it. And imagine those gold miners who moved across the country to find treasure and they took their pickaxe and they took their shovel and they put one shovel into the ground and they hit a rock. Man, this is hard. I'm going home. That's what many of us do as believers. The pastor said something I'm not, I don't like. I'm leaving that place. I'm taking my pickaxe and my shovel and I'm going home. When you're searching for treasure, you dig in. You buy the field. You know what? I'm buying the whole thing because I know there's treasure in here somewhere. When you're digging, you come across dirt, which is humanity. You come across, I recently was talking to somebody in ministry and they were like, man, ministry is great except for the people. You like that? <laughs> we, we, in, we got treasure within us, 
And to find that treasure, we got to dig. We got to move rocks out of the way. We've got to move, move dirt out of the way. Sometimes you come across clay that you got to dig through. And clay in the scripture talks about frailty and decay and destruction. We've got to dig for treasure. I know there's treasure in here, God, because you said I'm your treasure city, that you've deposited on the inside of me these treasures. But how come when I look down in here sometimes, I see pride and I see arrogance and I see deception and I see weird and I see frustration and I see, you know what, I bought the whole field so the whole package comes with it because I know there's a treasure inside of here. We got to keep digging and keep digging and keep digging to find the treasure. These treasure hunters sold out to find the treasure. They gave their life in search of life-changing treasure. The life-changing treasure that he's deposited inside of you and, and inside of me. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, remember he's put this treasure in earthen vessels. Verse 8 says, we are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Why are we not crushed? Why are we not in despair? Because I know there's a treasure in there persecuted but not forsaken. You know why I'm not forsaken? Because he, he's, the treasure is inside of me. He's deposited himself, struck down but not destroyed. The righteous fall, but they get back up again. Why? Because they're, they're in search of a treasure. They're in search of finding something of value. They're in search knowing that God's put himself inside. And Lord, would you give me more of you? Would you deposit more but not destroyed? Always carrying about in the body. The dying of the Lord Jesus, the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our body, the treasure. Jesus, would you be manifested in us? Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and hid. And for the joy of it, he goes and sells all that he has and buys the field. He sells all the, that he has and buys the field. For God so loved the world. For God so loved you. For God so loved your field that he gave his only begotten son. Why? To buy the field. To buy the whole thing so he could deposit his treasure inside of you. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 6 it says, in this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you've been grieved by various trials. Traveling out to the gold rush in 1849, I imagine they came across some trials on the way. They couldn't just hop on United Airlines Flight 777 to California. They were on stage coaches and carts and horses and camels, and they were on this, everything they had. Though you've been grieved by various trials, that the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than gold, that perishes. Though it is tested by fire, may be found to be praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Where is treasure? Where is depository? His armory? his storehouse, the place where God puts his presence, where God puts his glory, where God puts his power is inside of us. You were made in, in God's image, so you're a treasure. He wants to deposit himself inside of you so you can carry the very treasure of God with you wherever you go. You're a treasure when you ask Jesus into your life he begins to deposit himself in you and you carry the treasure. I'm gonna ask you to stand up on your feet today. I'm gonna pray for you. How many of you understand what we're talking about today? <clears throat> if you'd close your eyes for me as I begin to share with you just what the Lord put on my heart for some of you today. You're a treasure, and you carry a treasure. 
God made you in his image and his likeness, and you're valuable to him. And they, the enemy wants to do everything he can do to keep you from understanding your value, to keep you from understanding how much you're worth, that there's been a, a price tag that's been paid for your life. The Son of God came and bought the whole field because you were there, because the field is you. And I'm gonna pray for a couple different categories today. But to the first, the enemy's done everything he can do to make you feel that you're of no value, that you're of no worth. What good are you? If you look, suicide rates have gone up drastically. Because in that quiet place of being isolated, the enemy's voice has just been talking, talking, talking. You're not significant. You're not valuable. Who are you? Who do you think you are? The king of kings says, they're my treasure city. I've deposited myself inside of them. So when you, when you ask Jesus into your life, he deposits himself in you. And you become that storehouse of the presence of God. When I walk around and I live life, I realize, you know what? I'm carrying treasure that other people are supposed to benefit from. So it's more than just about me. I carry the presence of God. You and me, we, if we carry the presence of God, we have the capability of seeing somebody's life changed when we walk in the room. Because we carry the very presence and glory of God inside this earthen vessel. What a great plan of God. He hid it where nobody would look. So I'm going to ask you today, if, if you've been battling with those lies that I'm of no value and the enemy's been hitting you there. Or you need to come to Jesus for the first time and say, I want Jesus to be Lord of my life. I want him to deposit his treasure inside of me. I want you to acknowledge that by, by raising your hand. I want Jesus in my life today. I want him to be my Lord and Savior. If there's anybody here today, I want you to, to raise your hand. Amen. Amen, I believe. I see that hand up there, young man. God wants to deposit his treasure inside of you. So we're going to pray with him and anybody else to ask Jesus into their life, and then we're going to have another prayer. So would everybody repeat after me? Say, Jesus, would you forgive me for all my sin? Would you wash me and make me clean? Thank you that you came and gave of your life to buy the field, to buy me. And today, I ask you to come into my life, to come close to me, to deposit your treasure inside of me. And I want to live for you every day of my life. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. I believe the Lord wants to touch some of you here today. How many of you know that when a treasure hunter finds the stash, when they find the gold, you'll never hear them say, I got enough. I'll leave the rest here for somebody else. But they, they, they go down there and they're, they're scraping everything out of there. I believe that God wants to touch you today. There's more of God available for you. Where is it? It's right there inside. He's deposited himself in you. So if you want more of God today, you want more treasure? I'm gonna ask you to come down to the altar today. Just make that public 
declaration. I want more of God. Don't wait for anybody else. Just come on down and say, I want more of God. I want more of that treasure. I want more of what he has for me. I want more. 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 The Lord's looking for the hungry. He's looking for those that he could deposit more of himself inside of. Lord, have your way in this place. Lord, have your way in this house. Have your way in these lives, Lord God. I thank you that you take of yourself. You take of your holy presence. You take of your Holy Spirit. Oh, and you deposit it on the inside. And you deposit it as you lift up your hands. Let it be like your piggy banks opened up. I'm saying, Lord, come and fill me. Lord, come and touch. Lord, come and move. Lord, come. I surrender myself to you. Lord, have your way in me. Lord, I want more of you. Lord, I'm desperate for you. Lord, I'm searching for that treasure. I'm searching for it. And though sometimes I dig and I hit some rocks, and sometimes I go through tr trials and struggles, oh, but I bought the whole field. I bought the whole package, the whole thing, oh, because there's valuable treasure inside. There's valuable treasure of the power and the presence and the glory of God. Oh, what's of greater value than your faith what's of greater value than faith that's worth more than gold that's worth more than anything is the presence and the power of God inside of you mighty God thank you Lord Lord, I pray, Lord, for a fresh, a fresh deposit. Lord, a fresh deposit. Lord, we understand deposit. Oh, Lord, put it in. Oh, put it in, Lord. Thank you that you hide treasure, Lord, in this earthen vessel. Lord, let them dig past, oh, the challenges. Dig past the frustrations. Lord, dig past, oh, God, the, the, the barriers and the obstacles. Let them dig past those things, Lord, God, and find the treasure. Lord, of your presence, of your glory. Lord, I pray a fresh touch in the mighty name of Jesus. A fresh touch today. Oh, there, there, she's hungry. She's hungry, Lord God. Oh, Lord God, she's hungry. Let her sell all. Let her sell all, Lord God. Mortgage properties, mortgage futures. Lord God, for the field, God, of what you have and the things that you've planned are so much better than what we could even imagine or plan for ourselves. Lord, I I pray, Lord, for a fresh anointing today. Oh, a fresh deposit. Lord, sold out. Lord, sold out. Laying down everything. Lord, for your glory, for your purposes. Oh, we think we could say it's sacrifice. Oh, but it's not sacrifice. Oh, we're giving up so that we could have far more than we could ever imagine. Storing up treasure in heaven. Storing up treasure. Lord, I thank you today. Lord, fresh touch. Oh, let her mind be renewed. Uh, let our mind be renewed. I, I declare that every lie of the enemy, uh, oh, that you can, that you won't, and that it's too late. Lord, I thank you those lies uh, fall to the ground uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you, uh, Lord, that the future uh, is better than the past. Uh, there's good days ahead. Uh, Lord God, I thank you. Uh, let our hands, uh, Lord, have like a metal detector. Uh, oh, that they're searching for that treasure, searching for you in the word, uh, searching for you in prayer, uh, searching as you would lead, Holy Spirit. Uh, thank you, Lord. Lord, as we acknowledge you, uh, you'll direct our path. Uh, I thank you. You've given us a treasure map. You've given us the treasure map, how to find the gold, how to find it. Lord, a fresh touch, a fresh deposit. I declare strength. Lord, thank you those that wait on you. They'll renew their strength. They'll rise up with wings as eagles. Lord, run and not be weary. Lord, let them sell all for the field to find the treasure. Fresh touch in the mighty name of Jesus. Fresh touch in Jesus' name. Lord, a divine deposit. Oh, from the, from the storehouses of heaven. Oh, the storehouses of heaven. Lord, I thank you. Lord, it's your desire. It's your desire to pour out. He says that if we even test him in our giving, he says, see if I won't open the storehouses of heaven and pour out such blessing. There not be room enough to contain. You're the piggy bank. He wants to fill you up so that you overflow and all that comes out blesses others around. Lord, I thank you for the treasure. 
I thank you that she is a treasure and she carries a treasure. Uh, Lord, I thank you for the deposits uh, oh, that she's made into the storehouses of heaven. Uh, and Lord, I pray, uh, oh God, that you would cause there to be such blessing. Uh, there not be room enough to contain it. Uh, oh God, let her wa- work past, uh, dig past weariness, uh, dig past, uh, oh, frustration. Uh, Lord, I declare it's a new day. Uh, it's a new day, oh God. Uh, all things have passed away. Uh, all things become new. It's a new day. Uh, Lord, deposit deposit fresh, deposit fresh, a fresh touch of your presence. Lord, let them dig, let them dig, let them dig. Oh God, I declare words that have been spoken that have limited, words that have been spoken that have been roadblocks. They be removed in the mighty name of Jesus. It's a new day, it's a new day. Oh, let them search for treasure. Oh, a fresh touch, fresh touch in the mighty name of Jesus. A fresh touch, anoint these hands. Lord, cause what she touches to be blessed. Lord, I thank you as she digs. As she digs, she's going to find treasure. Oh, the next shovel full of dirt. Oh, there's going to be a gold nugget inside of it. Lord God, what have you done? Oh, there's treasure in this field. There's treasure in this field. A valuable field. Lord, that you gave your life, Jesus, to buy the whole field. The whole field of fresh touch. God, let there not be a striving. God, let there be a resting in you. A resting in you, Lord. I thank you that she's valuable. She's valuable over who you've made her to be. And besides that, Lord, you've deposited yourself inside. You've deposited yourself. Lord, so I pray that she'd receive what she came here for. I want more of you. I want more of you. I want more of you. I want more of you, Lord. God, let that cry. Oh, let that cry rise up oh, within her. Lord, I thank you for the promise that you've given us. All oh, the plans that you have for us. Lord, you say they're good. They're good plans. But you said, Lord, that if we seek you with all of our heart, that we'll find you. We'll find you if we seek you with all of our heart. If you seek him, if you look for treasure with all of your heart, you will find it inside of you. Father, I thank you. Thank you, Lord, for a fresh deposit, a fresh deposit of treasure, Lord, that you put in here. Lord, I thank you for it, oh God. Lord, I pray like never before, others will begin to withdraw, Lord, of this treasure, and you'll add back in. Oh God, as we, as he pours out, you'll add back in. Lord, as the oil never runs out, Lord, as he pours out, you'll pour back in. Lord, let him look for ways to pour out in multiplied ways, Lord God. I thank you for a fresh deposit of treasure. Lord, thank you for this treasure. Thank you for this treasure, Lord. As she seeks you, she'll find you, Lord God. You said if we seek you with all of our heart, we'll find you. Lord, let her find you. Let her find you. Let her find that treasure, Lord, that you put on the inside. A fresh touch today. Fresh touch today. Fresh touch, Lord. Thank you for this treasure. Thank you for this treasure, oh God. As she seeks you, she'll find you. She'll seek you and she'll find you, oh God. Lord, I thank you. Oh, you're just around the corner. Lord, you just wanted to go a little deeper. Uh, treasure isn't found on the surface. Uh, treasure is found when we dig deep. Uh, when we dig deep, uh, Lord, we cry out to you today. Uh, Lord, a fresh touch of your presence. Uh, Lord, a fresh move of your spirit. Uh, oh, God, we buy the field. Uh, oh, we buy the whole package. Uh, Lord, the whole thing. Because there's a treasure there. There's a treasure. Fresh touch today fresh touch today, oh God. A fresh supernatural touch. Pour out your glory. uh, Pour out your presence. uh, Pour out your power. uh, Pour out your glory. uh, Pour it out, Lord. If she seeks you, she'll find you. Lord, let them go deep. uh, Let them go deep. Let them go deep, Lord, to find the treasure that you've deposited. Lord, let them not believe any lie that's been spoken to him, that's devalued him. Lord, I thank you that he's valuable. He's valuable, oh God. There's none like him, like a rare coin. Lord, there's none like him. Fresh touch in Jesus' name. 
fresh touch, Lord God. Oh, let the hunger, uh, let hunger well up, Lord. Uh, Lord, you promise those that hunger and thirst uh, for righteousness that they'll be satisfied. Uh, Lord, if we hunger and thirst after you, you promise to fill us up. Uh, you promise to fill us up. Uh, Lord, let them find treasure. Let them find treasure. Let them find treasure, oh God. Let them find treasure in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, thank you, Lord God. Uh, thank you, Lord God. This treasure hunter uh, is going to strike it rich. Uh, oh, he's going to strike it rich. Uh, oh, God, he's going to strike it rich. Uh, Lord, he's going to find you. He's going to find your presence. He's going to find your glory. He's going to find your word. He's going to find oh, all that you're doing. Uh, Lord, anoint these hands. Uh, anoint these hands. Uh, God, let there be power that flows through these hands. Uh, let them see signs, wonders, and miracles uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, Lord, a fresh touch today. Uh, oh, this treasure hunter, uh, let him find treasure. Uh, let him find treasure, oh God. Uh, oh, let him dig, let him dig, let him dig. Uh, Lord, I thank you today for treasure, uh, fresh treasure, uh, treasure, oh God. Uh, treasure, Lord Jesus, let him search. Uh, let him search for treasure, oh God. Uh, Lord, I thank you, thank you, uh, thank you, Lord, in so many ways. Uh, she's a treasure that has a treasure, uh, that has a treasure, oh God. Thank you, Lord, for your plan and destiny for this little one, Lord God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Have your way. I thank you, Lord, even in this process. Lord, even through this delivery, she'll see the hand of God, and she'll see the treasure. Oh, that this baby is. I thank you. I thank you, Lord Jesus. Let her find the treasure. If she digs, let her find the treasure. Oh, let her find the treasure. Fresh touch today. Oh, as she searches, fresh touch today. Fresh touch today, oh God. Fresh touch today. Let her find the treasure. 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 Oh, Jesus. Thank you for the hungry. Thank you for the hungry. They'll be satisfied. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I thank you that as she seeks you, she'll find you. When she seeks you with all of her heart. Fresh touch today. Let her find treasure. We found gold. We found value. Thank you, Jesus. Let there be, Lord, shouts of joy. Lord, let there be shouts of joy. Lord God and your people, oh, we found treasure. We found value. Oh, we found your presence. Isaiah or Jeremiah chapter 29, a scripture you've all heard. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and pray to me and I will listen to you and you will seek me and find me. When you search for me with all of your heart, I will be found by you. Father, I thank you today. Lord, that when we seek you, we'll find you. When we seek you with all of our heart, the treasure that you put on the inside. Oh, that's worth more than gold. That's worth more than silver. That's worth more than anything that, that money can buy. God, because those things can rust and be stolen, Lord, but that treasure of your presence, that treasure of our faith, Lord, it can't be stolen. It can't be touched. So we thank you today. We give you glory. Let's give God some praise today. As a, as a six-year-old, I remember going to my, my grandparents' house and he would, he would bury treasure in the yard. And he would create a little road map, you know, a, map, a treasure map for me to find the treasure. And I'm six years old. He's a lot older than six. He could have he got a backhoe and, and buried the treasure where I couldn't find it. But how many of you know he, he wanted me to find the treasure? He just wanted me to look for it a little bit. There's all this treasure that God says, hey, if you just... Just follow the just follow the roadmap. You'll find it. It's I'm not. He can, he's God. He could make it so that we could never find it. But he says, "Hey, seek me, and you'll find me if you seek me with all of your heart." Amen.
Amen. I bless you today, church. Let's say our declarations today. There's power in our words. We decree a thing and it'll be established. I want you to say today after me, I am saved. I am blessed. I am valuable. God's deposited his treasure inside of me. And I'm in search of it. Amen. God bless you today.